to all our viewers who have joined today. And we're expecting more viewers at this point. Welcome to the fourth lecture of Acharya Mahapragyaji's Birth Centenary. Jain Education Research Foundation, in collaboration with JERF Center, Jain Center of South Florida and Florida International University, is conducting these lecture series via Zoom. So the Mahapragyaji's Birth Centenary, we are celebrating as Mahapragyaji was born on 14 June 1920, and this year is 2020. We're celebrating the 100 years. Um, with further ado, I would like Sapanji to introduce our um, amazing speaker today. Go ahead, Sapanji. Th thank you very much, uh, Deepji. Jai Jinendra, everyone. I'm Sapan Bafna. I'm the co-chair of the board at JERF, and I really appreciate and applaud all of you joining this webinar today. Um, as Deep covered, thanks to the inspirational efforts by Samni Charitra Pragyaji and Chaitanya Pragyaji, we are having this forum and the good discussions on Jainism from an academic lens, which is given by the Jain, best Jain scholars on the globe uh, under this Acharya Mahapragya Birth Centenary Lecture Series. Uh, now, coming to Deepakji, um, when I was asked to do the introduction for Deepakji, my puzzle was, how do you introduce someone who's known to everyone? Um, he has touched our hearts, minds um, in numerous ways over the last decade, not just the Miami community, but entire US, and I, I should say he is a global gen leader. Um, so I, I really cannot do that job. What I can tell you is he's the first Indian to hold the highest position at a business school, not just in one continent, not just in US, but in three continents, um, at Kellogg, at Inseed, and now he runs the, the best business school in China as its president. Um, the list of accomplishments for Deepakji is big. Um, I really cannot count. It will take the entire time to count his designations, directorships, book authorships he has done, and numerous accomplishments. Though it is apt for me to say a personal story, what I have myself, together with other friends and colleagues of mine at JERF, have witnessed firsthand of what Deepakji offers. So our relationship with Deepakji goes back to 2006, when he hosted a um, few gen leaders from across US at the Kellogg School of Management uh, some of my colleagues, uh, Premji, Kirtiji, Bindesh Bhai, a couple of us had the privilege to be with him. And I, rem I remember in, those, uh, in that session, which uh, lasted for uh, two days, in his parting message to us, he said, and I'm quoting him here, there is no substitute to hard work. You work, you must work selflessly with passion and without thinking about the credit. And then he continued, Last but not the least, the challenge ahead of you is never greater than the force behind you. And Deepak Ji is always behind each of you. Of course, he addressed it to the entire group. And you know how we take the message to the entire group, right? I mean, you take it with a grain of salt. Well, in 2009, when we were working under uh, Samni Charitra Pragya Ji in Miami, and we had a proposal from FIU for a potential partnership, we did reach out to Deepak Ji to join us and lead us on the initiative. Uh, not only did he agree to support us with his time in his busy schedule, he actually helped us build the board. He brought in some top donors. And above all, he himself is one of the top donors of JERF. The success of the seed he planted with us at FIU is known to all of you. You all know how it is blossoming at FIU. We started the, the professorship and doubt professorship at UNT, but now this is a movement. We have 15 plus endowed professorships across US and in one way or other, there are, there are many people who have contributed and Deepakji is, is on the top of that list. The message, these professorships are spreading, the message, the ancient message of non-violence, of tolerance, to the Western academic institutions is unparalleled. And I'm sure you have heard our friends at FIU, at UNT, um, give the testimony for the same. Uh, coming to today's topic, I'm 
especially eager to listen to Deepak ji. Um, and I have my notepad and pen ready to capture the pulse of wisdom which come from Deepak ji so, so smoothly. There is no Gen academic in my view with the caliber, oratorship and analytical depth who has seen US, China and India as well as Europe, I would say, as much as limited it is when Deepak ji was in France. But there is nobody who has that depth and understanding. And I'm really hoping that Deepak ji will share that wisdom with us. While the new generation, uh, including me, sometimes we run after the buzzwords of artificial intelligence, of machine learning, Deepak ji continuously reminds us about the value of hard work, the value of education, the value of karma, which is the true human potential and, and uh, harnessing of its natural talent. His topic today says it's about entrepreneurship, but I do want to warn everyone, um, this you will see the mix of dharma and karma of how both of them are important for us to be successful, for gens to be successful and for, for people who want to make a difference in the world, why it is important. I'm sure he will kindle and rekindle the energy, the Shakti in you. That's what he calls entrepreneurship. Um, I will request you, Deepak ji, please, uh, together with your talk, do share the tips, tricks for, um, for, for people like me and many others on how to be successful. Um, you have some very unique way in making complex things simple and some simple things more more meaningful. I mean, you call your morning walks a, a, a walking meditation. That is, these are things which are simple probably to you, but they are so deep and meaningful for us. So I'm really looking forward to that. Deepak ji gave this talk as the first Mahavir uh, Swami uh, Janam Kalyanak lecture series at FIU in 2012. So this is, this is a nice uh, circle of wheel coming together uh, for us. Yeah. Deepak ji, I'm going to give the stage to you. Uh, you are the force behind us. You will continue to be that, I'm sure. And uh, uh, thanks again for doing this for us. Thank you, Sapan, for the wonderful words. And Jayajinendra to everyone. And my Sadar Naman to Samniji for including me today. But I was just reflecting back and a day came to my mind and that was September 11th, 1893. That was the day when the Parliament of World Religions, that conference was hosted in Chicago and Swami Vivekanand was the speaker and along with him was also a Jain monk and that was the time when the Jain religion was basically I would say started its roots in North America September 11th 1893 move forward a day called September 11th 2001 that was the day when a Jain called Deepak Jain was asked to welcome the first class as the new dean of the Kellogg School. In the history of business schools, as Sapan mentioned, it was the first time when a person of Indian origin, and that also with the last name Jain, was asked to head the institute. And I started that morning between 1893 to 2001, the difference is 108 years. And in Jain religion, that's a very, very special number, XO art, 108. So sometimes when I reflect back, it looks like Bhagavan ne koi ek avtar bheja. Sorry, if I will use few words here and there in Hindi, but the God sent someone else and I happen to be in that form to welcome the new class. But the day was not very normal. I started welcoming the students. And as many of you know, in less than half an hour, 
our head of corporate communications came and spoke in my ears and said, Dean Jane, there has been a terrorist attack on the US soil. You need to shut up before the cell phone starts ringing. Now you look at 108 as a very good omen and then you see this particular incident that no one in any, uh, no one with any full conscious can ever anticipate a day like this and it changed the world. We all know and I never thought that I would be the dean to start something with such an unfortunate beginning. But see, we cannot change the outcome. What we can change is our ways to think about reacting to that outcome. It changed the world. It changed business schools. And I remember that flights were not operating. And the biggest problem I expected that day was the, that our students who would graduate would have a very hard time finding jobs. And under my deanship, if the placement rate is not good, it would be a reflection not only on the circumstances, but also on the person who was the head of the institute. Anyway, we decided that we should do something. And what Sapan said in this, in his introduction, I remember many students coming to see me that week who already had jobs and they were starting because they had graduated in 2001 June and they were supposed to start end of September or early October and their employers called them and said, we cannot hire you. You have to wait till January 1st, 2002. Some said for a year, some said year and a half. And it was a real chaotic time. I tried to call my other colleagues at top business schools like Harvard, Stanford, MIT, and they said, they told me, Deepak, why you worry? This is not your problem. This is going to affect all of us. Now that is true, but I always learned one thing early in life, which is we all live under the same sky, but we seem to have different visions. Some people can see far ahead. Some people can only see so much. And that is to me the definition of vision that the, uh, what has happened has happened to all of us. But how you react to that is your efforts. And I decided to do a very simple thing. And that was, I didn't know very many people, but I knew the students I had taught over the years. So I decided to write a letter to the students whom I have taught from 1987 to 1996 till I came in the Dean's office. And I told them that if you have any work in your company, I have these students about 50 plus, can they be placed in some form or the other? I tell you, I was looking for 50 plus job. In two weeks, I had 93 offers. The students wrote to me and said, Professor Jane, you are now the dean of the school. You focus on the dean's work and tell your placement head to get in touch with us. It was a new awakening for me. And what Sapan said that no challenge ahead of you is greater than the force behind you. This has been my guiding. My students were behind me. Anyway, students were placed. But then I got a call from CNN. And at that time, the anchor person was Lou Dobbs. And he wanted to interview me. He had a copy of the letter. What happened was the day of the interview happened to be the day that I had to go to the hospital because in one of the trips, I broke my collar bone and I could not change my appointment. So I could not go and see him. He had still the news item and he, the news item said, Kellogg Dean 
begging for jobs. That was the CNN headline. Many people said, what a bad statement. I told them, this is the best statement. I got free publicity without paying for this ad. My point is, and that is what the talk today is, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe your personal consciousness and do what you think is right for the people you serve. My duty is to my students, my duty is to my faculty, my duty is to my alumni. And that is where I use this term, which is the talk of today, called spiritual entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship means taking initiatives. Taking initiatives, that is, initiative, those are driven by your inner spirit rather than just driven by your mind. So that is the topic I want to address today. And on this topic, I will tell you where my inspiration came from. Can I go to the next one? Deep? This is a very significant moment for me. This goes back to April 24th, 25th, the weekend, when a good friend, and I give this credit to Mr. Shashi Jain, who you see in the audience, he said, Deepak Bhai, aapko mujhe Mahapragya ji ke darshan karane hai, unki bhi ichcha hai aapse milne ki, to ek bar hum log chalte hai, unse milne ki liya. And we decided that we would go in the month of April, but again, I don't know why it always happens to me. We set the date and then there was a volcanic eruption around April 10th to 15th over the Iceland area. And all flights from US going to India via Europe were canceled. So I told Shashi Bhai ki lagta nahi hai ki ye jana hoga. But you know where there is a will, there is a way. I made, make one correction to that. My wife said, joke karta ho ki men have will, women have their way. Anyway, humne apna socha ki chalo, jana jarur hai. So I found a way to go and that was rather than flying over the Atlantic, I got this inside. Why not I fly over the Pacific? So I flew from Chicago to LA to Hong Kong. And then I said, from Hong Kong, I can go to Delhi. Then I can avoid the volcanic eruption and at least have this opportunity to have the darshan of Mahapragya Ji and seek his blessings. And I tell you that day also, the flight got delayed. And by the time I was supposed to land in Hong Kong, the flight to Delhi, the connection time was less than 15 minutes. Again, sitting in the my seat, I didn't know what to do, but I thought of an idea of talking to the pilot. I sent him a note and uh, I happened to be a board of director of United. The pilot was very happy to see a board member. So I said that I can talk to you about the board work, but I need a favor from you. If you can let the pilot in Hong Kong know that I have a connecting flight, you know, the pilot was kind enough to send a note and they waited for me till I landed. There was a person to take me to the other aircraft. I landed in Delhi, drove to Jaipur and from Jaipur we drove. And this historical day, the picture before you changed my view of looking at the Jain religion. And you know, very few people in life get these blessings when you sit in front of a living master, a living God. And I never knew, we spent more than an hour and a half. And he expressed to me his desire to create something, what he used the term called the wisdom world. I seek an apology from all of you. I have not made good progress on that initiative, but I haven't forgotten about it. And this is something that I still keep thinking about it. And to me, the concept of wisdom world is related to this concept of spiritual entrepreneurship that I am going to talk more about it 
in few minutes but this meeting was so important that i saw him i think on april 24th or 25th it was the weekend maybe it's 24th and i come back and may 7th if i remember he left this world as a student i learned a chapter called the last lesson and i thought this was one of his last wishes of how you build a wisdom world and he had given that responsibility to me and this is something as they in mathematics they say that the last unsolved theorem this is something that i have to work towards in order to create a tangible form of what i call the wisdom world let me deal with it more in a more systematic way deep next one so i thought i will share with you just this is enough this is enough i will sh share with you a historical perspective that how businesses have evolved over time and when you think i have a saying that when you have to think think big this is not my own saying but people say that so i thought i will share with you the time period of evolution of business what the business model was who the players were what the metrics was used to define the success and what impact it created on the world next column so if you look at the history up to the 19th century i would describe the business model was land acquisition or what we would describe as colonialism this was the time period when countries went and acquired other countries today we talk about all this outsourcing but in those days it was not outsourcing it was just grabbing the whole country we indians were ruled by the british for 200 plus years and at that time the players were countries uk was the leader france holland spain portugal most of the european countries they were basically rulers or they created colonies all over the world the metric was power i remember when i was a student in the kindergarten there was a saying that the sun never sets on the british empire that means they had so many countries as colonies that at some point during the day the sun was shining on one of the colonies and the impact was the strength one of the strongest country in the world next then when we moved to the 20th century the model shifted from colonialism to capitalism and this is what i would describe the time when us evolved and us created this concept of free market competition and now the country started becoming more independent and the players became the corporations so if you look at the last 200 years i am a board member of john deere and we have been in business for more than 180 years the oldest company happens to be dupont from the american side but i can give you examples of companies who are 150 to 200000 years old they have been the players the metric now became profits or the share price and the companies were evaluated based on the success they had in the marketplace next now if you look at today i would describe this century as a century of human capital development sapan mentioned in his introduction we talk about artificial intelligence we talk about machine learning we talk about internet of things but still the key driver behind all this is the entrepreneurial spirit you look at the last 50 years bill gates was an entrepreneur created microsoft 
you look at Facebook, it's all just before our own eyes. You look at Google, these are entrepreneurs. The new ideas have not come that much from corporations, but it has come from citizens, individuals like us. And my point is, the energy lies in these individuals, these citizens, and they are going to make a difference. And these individuals or citizens, their metric is not just profits or making money. They have a purpose in life. And the purpose is significance. What I mean is, by significance, I mean making a difference. Now, many people tell me, Deepak, oh, I agree with purpose, but there is something called performance. I said that performance is the profits. But the younger generation is not just driven by profits. They do want to have profits, but there has to be a purpose behind it. And that what brings me to this notion of entrepreneurial ship driven by spirits. Purpose to me is a spirit in human being where they want to make a difference in the lives of people whom you touch or who come across your business or across in the society. So that is what I want to touch today on. And the purpose of such entrepreneurship is to make a difference. And we are not just driven by success, by significance we make, we mean making a difference in the lives of the people that are there. Now going back to the previous column where we talk about capitalism, which all of us have seen in this world. And let me tell you, it's not that we are replacing capitalism with entrepreneurialism. These are all building on these blocks as we move forward. And one of the person who brought capitalism to mankind in the 90s was a person called Milton Friedman, person who got the Nobel Prize. And he was a big believer in free markets. And I will tell you, his concept of free markets, to me, coincides with the concept of entrepreneurship, except that in those days, that concept was taken more by entrepreneurs who ended up creating big corporations like the IBMs of the world, the John Deere's of the world. But John Deere was also an entrepreneur, but created a big corporations like John Deere. So things start with entrepreneurship. As a dean of Kellogg, it was an ambition I had to meet him. And one student helped me to go to meet him. And I remember it was July 2nd of 2003, I flew to San Francisco to meet him. And I asked him, what does he mean by the word social entrepreneurship? He said to me, he said, Deepak, the only social, not social entrepreneurship, social responsibility of business. He said, Dr. Jain, the only social responsibility of business is to make profits. He was very clear. But he said, what you do with profits is the next step. Your first step is to make profits. And that to me gave this insight that from profits, if you have some purpose in life, you can use those profits to give back to mankind. And that is what my talk is going to be. The next one. So I want to touch on this concept because today we are in the age of entrepreneurialism. And when people think of entrepreneurship, the first word that comes to their mind is business entrepreneurship. And business entrepreneurship to me is starting a new business. Everyone talks about it. I want to start this new website. I want to start this new uh, uh, restaurant. I want to do this online. So this, this is fine. So business entrepreneurship to me means starting a new business. The second part is social entrepreneurship where the purpose of business is to make a better society. You are still an entrepreneur. But rather than being driven by profits, you want to have the purpose and the purpose is how we, I make a better society, 
how I be, make a better community. That is social entrepreneurship. Today, I want to focus on the third one, which I call spiritual entrepreneurship. And this is beyond mind and body to go to the soul. By spiritual entrepreneurship, I mean how you create a better world. And in order to create a better world, you need to create a better person. Because the world is nothing but a place where we all live. So to me, when I use the word spiritual entrepreneurship, the, the spirit is still the same. It's entrepreneur means who are willing to take risk, but the purpose is different. For business entrepreneurship, the purpose is to create a profitable venture. For social entrepreneurship, the purpose may be to create a better community, a better society. Spiritual entrepreneurship to me is a step above that is to create better human beings who are driven by something that will make a big difference. Now, lots of people ask me this question. They say, Professor Jain, the world is so big that how can I make a difference? People are uh, on this call have heard me say this, but I will repeat. I always have a saying that to the world, you may be a person, but to a person, you can be the world. So spiritual entrepreneurs are those people who are driven with a purpose and the purpose is how we create a better world. Mahaprajaji, in his words of wisdom world, had this thing that how you create wisdom, a world full of wisdom, because to me, the word wisdom is one step beyond knowledge. You, knowledge you acquire. And then the question is, what is wisdom? To me, there is some similarity between a spiritual entrepreneur and a person who wants to be a part of the wisdom world, these are not completely mutually exclusive. What I keep working is to find the connection of spiritual entrepreneurship as a part of this wisdom world. Now, what, how we think of this word of spiritual entrepreneurship? The first word is spirit. Spirit in Hindi, I use this word is chetna. As they say, mind, body, and soul. Mind is the business entrepreneurship. Body is the society. You work with people there. And when you look into the soul and you ask what would the soul drive towards is to create spiritual leaders, spiritual individuals who are driven with a purpose and making this world a better and a safer place to live. Can we go to the next one? So let me give you how we think of spiritual entrepreneurship. And spiritual entrepreneurship to me, I would I like to think in terms of a structure. Because lots of time I get this question from people that Professor Jain, what do you teach in business schools? And I tell them that in business schools, what we teach our students is how you put structure on unstructured problems. To me, one part of human behavior is critical reasoning combined with structured thinking. These are two very important elements in life critical reasoning and structured thinking. If you try to put that together, you see some insights that otherwise would not be easily visible. So I try to put together a framework. This I would call a framework for spiritual entrepreneurship. And let me tell you what I say. Here I describe a human behavior driven by three circles. The first, as you call the genes, so when a human being is born, you are born with those genes 
and they become a part of your DNA. The second circle describes self. Self is what I would say is you, which is your own autoimmune system. And the third part that you get exposed is the external environment. So all human be be beings in this world, their behavior is a function of these three circles. Genes that you are born with, and the word I would use in Hindi for genes is sanskar. Sanskar that you get from your parents, from your grandparents and others. This is part of you when you are born. Self, I would describe as swell. Your self-confidence, your self-commitment, your self-realization. This is who you are. An external environment, the word I would use is, I would call Sangat. Sangat is the group you, people you associate with. Good company can influence you. Bad company can influence you. Your genes have an influence on you. So when you look at any human behavior, you have to ask the question, what drives this behavior? Is this this person's doing or this is something that his family is used to be doing or this is some external influence on the person? And I tell you, a very important part in life is this whole science, the art and science of parenting. And parenting to me is a responsibility. Once you have given the birth to a child as a parent, you want that child to succeed and not only succeed, you want that parent as a parent to give the child the best education, the best learning experience so that he and she can stand on their own legs and make you proud as parents, make the community proud and do something for the world. When I was young, my father always had a saying my father was born with one eye and later in his life, he lost the other eye. So a large part of his life, he lived as a total blind person. And he used to tell me that Deepak, insan, dekhta apne dil se hai, aankh to ek jariya hai. He used to say the eye is just a medium. The image is formed in the heart and that image stays there forever. Or very early in life, he told me one sentence that I have never forgotten. He said that, Beta, insan jitta apni aulad se hai aur harta bhi apni aulad ke aage hai. That means your children can make you feel a winner in life. And if the children don't become very successful, you feel a sense of defeat. So it was 2008. In 1996, my mother passed away at a very young age. From 1996 to 2008, 12 years, he lived alone as a blind person with my younger brother. But I made a point that I used to go and see him every month. Once a month, on a Friday night, I will come home, tell my wife I'm going to India. Saturday night, I reach there. Sunday, I meet with him. Sunday night, take the same flight that I came on Saturday night. Monday morning, back in the office. Did that for 12 years at least 150 trips or so. In 2008, he was very sick. I made three trips almost every week. In my last trip, he was in the ICU. The phone rang. I took the, I was in ICU, I came out. I spoke with the person who called me and I went back inside. So when I went back inside, he asked me, Beta, kiski, kiska phone tha? So I said that this call was from Mr. Mukesh Ambani and he was asking about your help and was saying that if you need any help in Delhi, he is always there for us. I tell you, he put his hands on my head and he said, Beta, tune mujhe aaj jita diya. Ki a person of that caliber is asking about my health. Tune mujhe aaj jita diya. After that night, I had to fly back. I came home. I landed in Chicago and he passed away. 
वो दिन उनका निर्वाण का दिन था ही थे उनको और लाइफ में कुछ नहीं चाहिए था द पॉइंट आई मेकिंग इज we are all blessed to be born in this human form spiritual entrepreneurship to me is how we build on the sanskars that have been given to us and the people we interact with to make ourselves a person who is willing to do something and make this world a better place a place full of wisdom a place full of intellect and give back but before you give back you have to become a role model now how do you do that let's come next to that next one so now comes for you to behave well we are all driven by this concept of question which is how are human human behavior before human behavior comes human intelligence and what are the different aspects of intelligence as an academic lots of my people would on the on this call would say the first part is iq which is your in, iq which basically is your intelligence quotient and that to me is driven by mind मेरी मदर पढ़ी लिखी नहीं थी बट वो हमेशा एक सेंटेंस कहती थी आई विल ट्रांसलेट दैट इन इंग्लिश वो कहती थी कि नेवर आर्ग्यू विद एन इडियट पीपल वाचिंग इट मे नॉट नो हु इज हु कि कभी भी बेवकूफ लोगों से तर्क मत करो दे से समथिंग जस्ट लिसन एवरीवन हैज अ पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड मेंटेन योर साइलेंस i don't know whether many people have paid attention to this i always tell my students that the word silent and the word listen have the same letters only different composition silent or listen mein ek hi letters hain and you will never repent for your silence kuch keh diya you can never take it back but my point is iq is intelligence quotient but intelligence quotient means you need to know when to act and those actions are driven with your mind then there was lot of research in the last 50 60 years on this concept called emotional intelligence that how you express your emotions how you understand the person better your body language is also a part of your behavior and this in the last 50 years i think this field has taken a very significant step towards research and you read a lot about it to me spiritual entrepreneurship is driven by what i would describe as mq which is moral intelligence and moral intelligence is driven by the soul but i mean by soul is your consciousness and moral intelligence to me is trying to differentiate good from bad and this good and bad are relative terms because one of the strongest point of jain religion that has impacted me and all my actions in life is this concept of anekant or anekant vaad as people say which means there are multiple view points or multiple ways of looking at things the opposite of that is dogmatic behavior where you think this is the only way the world should behave and to me that is to the biggest contribution given to us now when i think about the soul this is soul the other word i would use is the spirit and that's why this spiritual spiritual entrepreneurship to me is a person who is driven by his inner consciousness and that is deep learning sapan in his introduction used the concept called machine learning to me machine learning is the mechanical form which we program and put in the machine but behind the machine learning is 
also a concept in artificial intelligence, computer science, a term called deep learning, which means digging deeper. If there is something that I feel we need to teach or at least expose to our students and our children is how we need to make a balance between our mind, our body reactions, and our soul. The combination of these three in the center, I use the word values, and that values, the Hindi translation is sanskars. Sanskars to me is the DNA is something that is inside us, and it's nothing against anyone. Every morning when I get up, I feel blessed that I was born in a Jain family. This is my power, this is my strength. And the first thing I do after brushing my teeth, having a cup of tea, is to go for a walk. And walk to me is what Sapan said slightly differently to me is meditation in motion. This is the time when I think of what I want to do during the day. What are some of the leftovers? Who are the people I need to call? I have a mental list. I am a person from the Stone Age. I don't do much of writing down things or using computers and others, but I create a mental checklist, come home, take a shower, get ready, and start trying to do as much as possible on those items and work on those items on the list and try to call people, do as much as possible. So the point I'm trying to make is, what is spiritual entrepreneurship? As I said, entrepreneurs are people who are willing to take risk, people who are willing to do things which is driven by the inner self. And not only the inner self, something that they think is very important for mankind. So the purpose is different. In business entrepreneurship, the purpose may be driven by profits and creating a good business. Social entrepreneurship society, but to me, the purpose behind spiritual entrepreneurship is to create better human beings. First, be a better person yourself before you create a better world. Now, when you think of the principles of Jain religion, we all know the three words, ahinsa, anekantvat, aparigre, or controlling your desires, controlling your uh, behavior. And to me, there are three things that drives me on a daily basis. So First I... is, excuse me? Hello? Okay. And to me, there are three things that drives me on a regular basis. First is, the concept of uttam chama, which is the forgiveness. People who have dealt with me, including at home, I try to keep my temperament under control. And it's not easy to get me irritated, not that I don't get irritated. When my wife gets angry at me, I keep quiet. An angry person wants reaction. When she sees no reaction, she has stopped getting angry. My point is, when people get angry, rather than reacting at the same time, you reflect on it and then you deal with the matters. And sometimes people may say things to you which may not be unpleasant, but one attribute that I have always followed and it has given me multiple rewards is the act of forgiveness. And the second one is humility. मेरी माँ कहती थी कि बेटा आम जब पक जाता है ना वो झुक जाता है कच्ची आम भी खड़ी रहती है अकड़ती है सो शी सेड इनसिक्योर्ड पीपल वुड ऑलवेज एक्ट टफ सिक्योर्ड पीपल एंड पीपल हु हैव एक्सप्लेस्ड शुड मेक देम्सेल्स मोर एक्सेसिबल सो ह्यूमिलिटी मींस एप्रोचेबल एंड दैट इज समथिंग दैट आई ट्र and I have seen that forgiveness and humility has no national characteristics. It is a human characteristic. 
whether you know, I am in China or I am in France or I am in US or in India, I always treat people as human beings and respect them for who they are. And the third one is control your desires. Because lots of unhappiness comes from not what you have, but what you don't have. And if you don't have desires left, you feel very accomplished. People who know me know very well, na kabhi gaadi chalani sikhi, na kabhi computer chalana sikha, na kabhi ghadi pehni, na koi TV ka dekhne ka shock hai. I am happy with, and my happiness comes from interacting with people. Dostana, gharana, what I mean is people to me gives the best sense of joy. I pick up phones, talk to people. My point is human intelligence, human behavior are all derivatives of spiritual entrepreneurship. Can you go to the next one? Now comes this picture, which is a very holy picture for me. And that is Sapan said in the beginning. This is to me a formalization of the initiatives we had with all of us. You know, in life, you have to make things tangible. We talk about all the Jain principles, etc. To make it tangible was, with the help of all the people in the audience, creating a professorship at FIU is something that I think was a major life milestone in the lives of all of us who are listening today. And I am very grateful to FIU, President Rosenberg, Dean Fulton and others at that time to give us this opportunity. land where we were able to plant the seed. And as Sapan said in the morning, in the beginning of this morning, now there are multiple branches of this tree and each branch is another chair. He mentioned about 15 or so. And with the help and blessings of Samnijis and all our leaders, I still feel that when people would reflect back, that they would say FIU was the beginning. This is where we all got the inspiration. And to me, that is the beginning of our spiritual journey or the spiritual entrepreneurship. All of the people here in this audience, I would describe as spiritual entrepreneurs, including Mark Rosenberg and Dean Fulton, because if they would not have allowed us, they were willing to take the risk. And by risk, I mean they were willing to take this responsibility that this would be a good thing for the institution. And Samnijis were there to deliver. In marketing, I say brand is not the promise, but the delivery of the promise. We all can make good speeches and make promises, but if you don't deliver on the promise, there is no brand. So FIU today to me is the brand behind the Jain Studies program, the Jain Scholarship program, and that is something that we all have achieved with the blessings of Samnijis, with the full support of FIU and all the donations and commitment of the people in this group who have made it possible. I just was a very small player, a, you can say a catalyst. I had something with me which was an academic credibility being the dean of a school. So when I went and met these people, one person who, with whom I have spent most of the time is Mr. Neptune Shrimal when we were creating the second chair at UNT. And all the conversations were how we give it an, this thing an intellectual flavor. Can you go to the next one? So I said that, and this is, I would like to conclude and then open for Q&A. Just, yes, just leave it there. When I was the Dean of Kellogg, and all schools have to come from a branding part. My branding of Kellogg School was this branding core from success to significance. I used to tell my students that in life first be successful, but don't end your journey there. While you are at the top, you should think of making a difference 
And making a difference is the word I mean by significance. Difference in the lives of people who work for you or work with you. But don't be an idealist that I want to change the world and I want to go and work for the Red Cross or I want to go to Africa and do things for the poor people in Africa. You should do that. But first establish a successful platform because I always have a saying that don't wait to make a difference once you retire. Do it when you have a position because the day you retire, you become from who's who to who's he. Nobody will give you any importance. So this is what I describe as the journey from success to significance. I come to INSEAD in Europe. Their branding position was the business school for the world. I wanted to make a small change, the business school for a better world. And a better world means a world which is driven by peace, harmony, and prosperity. So this better world, though the people there thought that I was being too idealistic, and since my duration was very short, some was not, was not very kind to me, and I ended up being very sick when I was diagnosed with having brain tumor with cancer, and had my brain surgery, though it was not a cancerous thing, it was not a tumor, it was a very unique type of brain inflammation. And that happened to be my surgery was on April 19th of 2012 and again people talk about wireless technology today I believe in wireless significance my wife tells me that sari dunya ki prarthnaye tumhare saath thi jisne tumhe bacha diya ye koi doctoron ka kaam nahi tha because the way I came out of this thing subhe uthta hoon to hi sosta hoon that people help me and that is my responsibility to this world now i come to china can you go to the next line so i joined china and i will just tell you and conclude my talk so this is something that china's brand we are using the china essence and global significance and why china after I left Kellogg, I had another option, and that was to be the dean of MIT Business School Sloan. Some or other, I felt uncomfortable going to MIT because MIT competes with Kellogg, and my spiritual side did not allow me to go to a competitor and make that school better than the school that gave me a chance to succeed. MIT didn't make me an offer in 1985 when I was in the job market. They only made me an offer when they saw this guy has something to contribute. I feel indebted to people who gave me a chance, who took the risk of hiring a person who had no knowledge of marketing. And a school where I went with no knowledge, I ended up being running that school. So I decided not to take that position. But why I took China? And November 1962, China attacked India. And when they came from the northeastern side, in those days that area was called NEFA, Northeast Frontier Agency. Today it is called Arunachal Pradesh. When they crossed the mountains, they came to a town which is close to Tejpur, where I was born and raised, called Bhalukpong. I was in KG class and the teacher came and said, I think it was November 18th or 19th, that the Chinese army is 22 kilometers from the school and the government has asked us to vacate the town by 6 p.m. This is about 11 a.m. and we are trying to reach your parents to take you back home. I tell you, the parents came, we ran as refugees. In those days, there were no bridge over river Brahmaputra. So we waited at night on this side. Next morning, we crossed by ferries and it took us eight days to come to Rohatak near Delhi, where my grandparents were living. This is 1962, November 18th. 55 years later, November 2017, one of those refugees was announced as the president of this school, which is one of the top five leading business schools in the world. A refugee becomes the president, and this to me 
is the power of education, is the power of the religious beliefs I have, the power of Jainism, the power of the people, my teachers, my parents, my mentors. So my concluding remarks are that with good education, with good upbringing, and with good mentorship, sky is the limit. We can think of whether we can achieve what we want to achieve as impossible. I always say that nothing is impossible if you have the willingness, if you have that what I call the entrepreneurship in you, that you are willing to put the efforts. Last one. So, life is all about people. If I have to reflect back and see, when people ask me these questions a lot, that what would you describe as your reasons for success? I always tell them that it's the people I have interacted with, starting at home from the parents, my brothers, sisters, my teachers at school, we come from a very ordinary family. My father had tough time, could not afford to have money to let us buy books. My teacher saw something in me and at three o'clock in the afternoon when the school was over, he used to say, kitab le jana, raat ko padh lena, kal mujhe de dena. Aise karke, I, from first grade till I did my high school, Teacher Sham ko kitab dete te padh leta tha, agle din teacher ko de deta tha, kabhi kitab kharidi bhi. Bhagawan ne ek achhi yadash di thi, to yad rahe jata tha ki kya hai. Aur ek choti si incident bataunga, ek din teacher, the teacher was teaching a class and we used to have a class called reading, where teacher would ask people to read and then suddenly stop and ask this, randomly pick a student and say, you read from that point onwards so that he wanted to make sure that everyone was paying attention. And the teacher saw, saw me and said that this guy is not sitting up, he is not doing He asked me, Deepak, now it is your turn to read. I took the book from my reader and from my neighbor and I started reading where the other guy has left. He asked me to sit down. He said, how do you know where he stopped? I said that I was not following the book, but I had the book in my mind. So I was just going what I read overnight and I knew where he stopped and what the line was after that. I want to thank all of you. A person like me has reached because of all the blessings. Sorry. Samiji, and I tell you we have lots to do. But again, as I said, Deepa again is very committed. Kabi socha nahi tha ki ladka jo chin ke ladai mein bhaga as a refugee, wo chin ke hi desh mein would become the head of the institution. Ek ladka jisne kabi angreji nahi padhi thi, hindi raat vasha vidyala mein padhata tha, ek English medium school ka aake ek dean banega. Ye sab humare sanskar, humari parvarish, mentorship ka hai. My message to all the people are attending this thing is one simple thing. Believe in yourself. Don't let you down. Nobody can do anything to you without your permission. Keep your spirits alive. Seek help when you need. People would help you. Don't feel shy in asking for help. People would help you and be proactive. That is entrepreneurship. Seek help. Believe in yourself. The world is there for you. And this morning, I want to tell all of you, Deepak is is always there for you. I have been blessed because I had very good people who supported me over the years. I still remember our discussions with Neptune Saab in the motels in Dallas when we were thinking of UNT, my visits to Florida, my visits to India, and whenever I am on the flight, I like to introduce myself to the person sitting next to me. You never know when this relationship 
would take a form that can lead to greater profits, greater prosperity, and greater peace. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity. And I can rest assure you, a person like me, if he can achieve, most people in the world are better, smarter, they had better education than I had. So nothing is impossible. It's only your mind that takes you back or takes you forward. I never hesitate to ask anything. And not only ask, if people ask me for something, I never hesitate to give. If you give X, you will get 4X back in some form of the other. And I want to wish everyone an offer today to each person attending this audience. Whatever the best is in me, I offer that to all of you. Or I want to share that with all of you. Thank you. All right, we are going to open the Q&A. And if anybody has questions, we are going to take one by one and Deepak Ji is going to answer that. Right, Deepak Ji? 100%. Sorry, I took more time than I was supposed to take. It's okay. It's okay. I, I could not control myself. Big problem. Okay, anyone? So, David asked the question here, um, I guess he said that what should be the broader goals, including on a national level for the FIU Jane Studies program now that it is firmly established and successful? So David is in the um, audience. Sure. So David, what do we, what's the purpose of creating this chair and creating this professorship, creating or taking this initiative. There are lots of very good principles in Jainism. Some or other I felt, and I, my colleagues would add to that, that we have not marketed them well. And by marketing, I don't mean marketing in a business sense. Sharing those principles with people, how those principles or those values can make their lives better. Now, one part that I think our next step should be is to get more, first is knowledge creation. That comes from research. And research means getting more students who would like to get into digging deeper into Jain philosophies, Jain principles, and trying to validate them with empirical data with further studies. Second purpose would be knowledge dissemination, which is sharing, and Samniji, etc., are creating a huge, they are creating a big impact by these programs they have, which now we need to more multiply across institutions and within. FIU. And the third part that FIU has been approaching us, and I think we have been slightly lenient on our side, is to take the next form of creating a center, what they call a center for GN studies. And the center means that you attract more scholars from all over the world, from different disciplines, who would like to have a taste of GN studies program and then try to build on it. Because today the world has become multidisciplinary. And for that, a just a professorship may not be enough to attract beautiful minds to come to FIU. So if I have to really invest and think about how we create a center where people come for a longer duration, spend three months, six months, year, and digging deeper into Jain values and creating meaningful outputs. Output may be research articles, output may be books, output, output may be new courses that we teach and building strong relationships with the roots in India where they can have resources in terms of transcripts, in terms of people who are willing to do that. And people like us can help in contributing financial resources. Uh, I remember the contribution, Rajiv Jain, Prem Jain, and all of us were so generous. And to me, teaching is not a profession. 
teaching is something I worship. Going to, just like people go to the temple, that is the same thing I feel like going to a class. Each student is a deity for me because we learn from them. So to me now the next step would be how we create this temple of learning by creating some good centers where we can advance the research aspect of Jainism or Jain studies. Thank you, Deepak Ji. We have another question in the chat. Um, as I know that you wanted people to ask you directly. Um, Lata no, uh, I am fine with you. So don't, don't, don't go through. Let's not create any channels. Okay, go, go ahead. Lata Sonpalti has asked, as a Jain believing in Ahimsa, is there a conflict in serving China which has engaged in killing more than one and a half million Tibetans? Can you just repeat the last part again? Just Sure. As a Jain believing in Ahimsa, is there yeah. a conflict in serving China which has engaged in killing more than one and a half million Tibetans? Okay. We have to be realistic. As a Jain, we don't eat any meat. Then does it mean that I don't become the Dean of Kellogg School where most students eat meat? What I tried to do when I was the Dean of Kellogg, you need to make sure that your imprints and your values are there. Don't try to change the system because that is that means you are fighting, fighting a lost battle. People who came in 2006 at Kellogg School, after I became the dean, my wife took this initiative and the cook at Kellogg, she taught them few vegetarian dishes. And I tell you, our lunch at that time had more vegetarian dishes than non-vegetarian. I just shifted the balance. But I decided not to have total vegetarian because then people would revolt. And slowly, slowly, we decided to add vegetarian items and reduce the non-vegetarian you come to China, killing of people. You know, in our freedom movement, there is no better non-violence preacher than Mahatma Gandhi. Jalia Wala Bhakti incident we. See, we have no control on what others can do. To me, the independence was a non-violence outcome, but within that outcome, we had a lot of violent activities. My father said that the train was in Pakistan full of dead bodies when the partition happened. So my point in life is you start making step-by-step -step improvements. You won't believe China is also a completely non-vegetarian place. After I became the president, they started adding in the cafeteria a pura section have vegetarian section. And I see people going and trying that. My view in life is steer people in the right direction. Our role is to give directional guidance, not the role to change the outcome. We are to steer people in the direction and one day would come when people would think this is a better direction and now let's put full speed in that direction and make a difference. To the world you may be a person, but to a person you can be the world. I met with the cook in my China uh, cafeteria. And she told me how to make aloo and gobi sabji fry in a separate pan, just put a oil dal ke ye hai. We have to learn these things. And once they start, see, it's not that they don't want to do. They are not exposed to that behavior. So this whole concept of violence is because people have not seen what the alternatives are. And that to me is leadership. When you take that, you explain people how you can do the same thing without getting angry, without getting violent. Outcome can still be achieved. Aaj, time nahi hai, but I think, uh, give me one minute, something very significant happened yesterday. My president, see we have two presidents, one a Chinese president and one a European president. The Chinese president comes from the party and normally from the Ministry of Education or Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the current Chinese president was the Consul General to San Francisco. Before that to New York, he's the rank of a Chinese ambassador to the United States, the highest possible foreign service. 
he is not well he had a surgery last thursday we had to make a decision on one of our senior staff members in terms of demoting him and both of us were supposed to meet with him digitally he was not feeling well and we had to make a decision so yesterday was saturday morning at 5 o'clock in the morning i get a call from his assistant that president lee has asked deepak would you alone meet with this guy along with his assistant and convey the message now this is a very delicate situation i am a foreigner an indian guy telling a chinese guy that we are going to take this responsibilities away from you so i told him that i will do this but i won't do with anyone else in the room or in the call i would use my human part to talk to him and i talked to this guy he and he is also from the party and i said mr x you know how much i care about you we are going to shift your responsibilities rather than saying take away from oh, you pay your attention to this i think your energy can be better used on this one that i am spearheading and i would like you to be a part of my team to do this work he had tears in his eyes he said that somebody cares about him he said i have been very unhappy at this school i am so happy that i get a chance to work with you ek chinese aadmi ke aankhon mein aansu aana aur kehna deepak you are not there i wish i could hug you and i am so happy that you have given me a new life and i would be more than happy to work with you on this mission so my point is there are ways to dealing with violent behavior there are ways to dealing with violent people and non violence till today to me seems to be a very very formidable approach to deal with it but for this you need to have patience the outcomes are not going to come overnight but you need to set the right directions in the right way thank you deepak ji there is um another district personnel from my immediate county public school who would like to uh, in the audience who would like to ask you a question she said how what should we teach our kids to be successful or to be happy okay these are not either or and happiness would not come without being successful success nahi hota agar khushhali nahi hai to you cannot be successful see one big project i have in mind and i just not getting it time is to work on this particular word that you used to write a book called the art and science of parenting ye mere badi bahut dino se ichha hai after i came to this country that how because our responsibility is for the kids we have brought to this world and i tell you kids are innocent but they also need proper mentoring and proper guidance some mentoring can come from you but sometimes you have to also find people who our kids would respect and would listen to see many people get advice few benefit from it. हम तो वही वो टीचर वही क्लास सब पढ़ाते हैं आई टीच टू सिक्सटी स्टूडेंट्स वन और टू स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर द क्लास वुड कम एंड से प्रोफेसर जैन दिस वॉज अ वेरी गुड मैसेज यू गेव टूडे हाउ कैन आई लर्न मोर अबाउट इट सो एज आई से द रोल ऑफ ए टीचर इज नॉट जस्ट टू टीच बट टू क्रिएट एन इंटरेस्ट इन द टॉपिक सो वेन द सेम थिंग द रोल ऑफ ए पेरेंट्स इज नॉट टू थिंक इन टर्म्स ऑफ सक्सेस फेलियर और हैप्पीनेस एंड सैडनेस is to give them better directions for better opportunities they don't know what is good or bad and as this morning i was listening to someone speech he said that you have to treat your kids differently in the first 5 years in the next 10 years and then they are like your companions or your friends because once they cross the teen age you have to treat them as equals as friends as rather than use pressure the problem that comes with us is we take a hierarchical approach that means i am the father you have to listen to me those days were fine when we were growing up but today i tell you the more you make them sit with you on the same platform 
एंड फर्स्ट थिंग इज टू लिसन टू देम साइलेंटली उनके क्या इश्यूज हैं व्हाट दे हैव इन माइंड एंड देन यू नीड टू थिंक अबाउट आर यू द बेस्ट पर्सन टू रिस्पॉन्ड और समटाइम्स यू मे से फाइंड समवन whom they respect and they would listen to i tell you you won't believe how many times i get calls from people randomly that can i send my son to you for half an hour and just have a chat with you and i said okay and i just give you this example my last flight after that i have not flown which was on march 13th i was coming from india took the non stop from Delhi to New York and New York to Chicago. I sat on my seat, and a person before me. I was in two A and he was in one B. He turned around and he said, "Are you Dean Jane?" I said, "Yes." He said, "I went to Kellogg in 1982-83. You were not the dean, but I read a lot about you." And a conversation started. and he said that my son wants to i want my son to do an mba and he doesn't listen to me would you mind i said of course i would be happy to talk to him i talked to him and the son decided to apply to kellogg and just say day before yesterday i was going for my morning walk and a car suddenly stops and who is in the car that person with his wife he says professor jain they live in chicago and they were just driving and i was walking and he says professor jain my son is going to start at kellogg and thank you very much your words made a difference my point is with kids if you are not the right person the right guidance comes from other sources look for people whom your kids admire or respect we have to think of this as a community don't just think as father and son or daughter and son or father mother and son and mother and daughter think of an enhanced group and large that group what you can call is your own group you can be of help to some other else children your children can get benefits from others we need to create this kind of a shared community and that to me i could not believe day before yesterday somebody suddenly in the middle of the road stopping the car and said Professor Jain, you remember me? I met you in the plane, and my son is joining Kellogg from Fort. I thought, I told him the same thing. I said, many people get advice, few benefit from it. I give this to many people, not only your son. Your son was kind enough to realize, and his son works for one of the big uh, Raytheon, one of these air companies, and he decided to move from New York to Chicago. My point is, kids being happy. and kids being successful these are two sides of the same coin don't think you are different you want them to be both but for you to have both of them more important is to make sure you have a chance to speak to them you have a chance to share your views with them you have a chance to listen to them you have a chance to make them feel that they are not separated and very often we this relationship of teacher uh, of parents and children is like a elastic waistband you can only stretch and don't make sure that the stretch is long enough for you to be connected and it doesn't break because the moment it breaks they start moving apart thank you so much deepak ji and since uh, we have to keep the time in constraint and there are several questions in the chat if it's possible if you could answer in the chat or uh, put your email in the chat where people can absolutely so let me tell you what we should do mm -hmm. i have a very simple email deepak is my first name i spell d i p a k not d w -E. e i didn't know english enough to misspell my name in the beginning so deepak middle initial c deepak c j at gmail.com please send me the queries and i will try to put together a draft that would answer questions in a broader way rather than answering individual questions i will send a draft deep to you and then you can circulate to the people who have been asked Perfect. let's put it this way so it becomes more efficient and then if there is any other reading that i think would be appropriate i will put couple of readings in that note that people can read more about such topics 
I put your email in the chat. So it's for everybody, anybody who would like to ask questions. I'm so sorry I could not take every question. No, 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 no. You should not be sorry. You should blame it on me because I took more time to speak and then we le le didn't give enough time for people to listen Thank and you. to speak or to ask. Thank you, Deepak Ji. It was such an enlightening and inspiring, um, amazing, amazing lecture. Now I would like uh, Shami Ji to say a few words. Okay. So uh, I am very much thankful to Professor Deepak Jain that he could speak on uh, spiritual entrepreneurship. We have listened to him how enlightened ideas he has about this particular new concept. And since we know that we have already such kind of a purpose behind establishing all these academic programs at FIU and in different universities, I would request Professor Deepak Jain to give time to think about the future of these academic initiatives, which we have already taken in different universities, and how we could develop this concept of spiritual entrepreneurship, and how you could contribute to develop the concept of wisdom world, which you all, always talk about it, and you yes. feel that it, it is your responsibility that yes. you want to establish it, you want to develop it, and you want to make some difference. So you have enough potentials, you have great ideas, you have power to make difference, to create significance, and to make the world better. So I would request you to focus, to spare some time for these kind of uh, activities, and especially for uh, the concept of wisdom world, which you have already in your mind, you have all the ideas about it, but you have to implement it in a, what you say, in actual sense. So you have given so many ideas and uh, about inter spiritual entrepreneurship, and uh, you also want that Jainism has a lot of things to share with the people to make the better world. All these different principles, how they can be implemented, how they can be more come into more experimental studies, we have seen that in India, a lot of scholars, they are thinking about it, that how we can make more scientific studies and we can create such kind of a better world by implementing these values, which we are learning from centuries. And you have already, you, you can be said that embodiment of these values in yourself. So you can create this kind of significance and you can, uh, what we say, use these uh, potentials of the scholars of all over the world and especially the world of science and how we, we can develop these scientific new studies in the field of uh, Jainism by support of all these different academic institutions of abroad in the US and other places, other countries. So this is my request to you especially and uh, I would request you that uh, you have enough time, though you have so many big responsibilities, even though these are very small things for you and uh, whenever <laughs> you will spare some time, you can make difference and you can show the right directions to all these academic institutions. So I'm very much thankful again for coming uh, to give this talk under the series of Acharya Mahapragya lecture series. and. Uh, we are very much uh, proud of you and we are feeling that JARF is being empowered because of you, because of your guidance, because of your, uh, what we say, ideas and because of your context. So we want to harvest your more and more energy to develop all these ki kind of concepts which we are looking for in future. So thank you for again for again for this enlightened talk under the series. Thank you, Shamiji. And thank